Hey guys, so um, this video is going to be kind of an update on Friday's video. Um, I was in a frustrated place that day. And some of you can relate. And you know it's hard when you deal with somebody who has memory issues. Um, I may not have articulated the way I want it to, what I was trying to say. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about it um, now that I, it's Saturday morning. I'm sitting here. We're having our breakfast. Technically, it's Saturday afternoon. It's 12 7, and we're just eating breakfast because we got up late this morning. Um, just because that happens some mornings, you know. And I do want to thank uh, CV, I think it was, that gave me some information on a group that could help. I will check into that. Thank you so much for that. Um, and the sundowning, I didn't know what it was called. But that's when it is the worst. Is it, as the sun goes down, things get worse. Um, and, you know, it's not every day, and it's not even, you know, some weeks it's worse than other weeks. And it's originally, um, we thought it was what's called stress dementia, which just happens when you're under a lot of stress. Because at the time we first started seeing the major signs, my dad was getting really bad, and then my dad passed away, and then my mom got cancer. And so we all thought it was just that. Um... But as it went on longer and longer, the more I think it's not that, it's it's got to be, you know, the disease. And the reason it's so hard to cope with is, um, just a second. Okay, um, sorry, my mom was wanting more breakfast, so I had to pause and go run and do that. Um, I'm wanting to clarify a few things. A, she's not been diagnosed, so... It's just based off of what I've experienced with my dad is why I think this. And so I think that's why I get frustrated because it's like, it, am I just putting a label on something we don't know? And I've tried to get the doctors to, you know, help me get answers on this. And uh, they're just like, oh, this is a normal kind of thing. And it's like, but I need to know what to call it, you know. And I think if I had the label for it, what it, she's actually going through, I think in a way that would put more ease on my mind because I would know this is what happens. This, is, you know, and it's different for every person, but you have some more guidance on what's going on when you have a label for an illness. And with my dad, we had a label, and so when he forgot things, it's like, oh, that's his dementia kicking in, and now it's like. Is she forgetting because she's got dementia, like I think, or is this just something else, you know? And am I just not getting it diagnosed? Am I not taking good care of her by not knowing what's going on? And as far as my frustration with her, when I get frustrated, and I think she'll back me on this, it's usually she's already getting frustrated with herself. And then she, when she gets frustrated, then I automatically want to take on the emotion for her and I want to be frustrated for her. It's not that I'm frustrated with her. It's like I pull that energy and I try to be the one carrying it instead of letting her carry it. That's kind of how it comes. And you kind of calm down when I do that, don't you? Yes. And she becomes more upset in a different way. And then, like, I start taking that and... I'm just that kind of person that I don't like to see people I love hurting in any way. Um, and so I, we, when I do yell and when I get upset with her, we do talk it out as soon as the moment comes where we can. And my mom always says, I know you love me. She says, I know that you're doing what you, is the best you can. She's always saying that I'm, I'm living the way I should be, basically, is what she says. But I don't always feel that way. And so, I noticed that this became worse when I had to go on the medication that I'm on. And it is something that scares me. Because I don't know how long i got to be on this medication. And right now, I haven't been able to get in to see my one doctor. Because with everything going on, they're trying to limit who they see. And if, you know, you're not having a major problem... They're not going to. And the next step for me, if they do take and change my med, is to go a smaller dose every day, except for one week of the month. And I hate medication. I don't want to be taking it that often. So it's kind of where I'm at. Like, 
is there anything else we can do? Because I don't want to be doing this. Um, but in order to keep me regulated, we have to keep me on this med. So um, I'm pushing it one day at a time. And as I said, I have had been watching a show that was really calming me down a lot. I was a lot less frustrated during the time I was watching that show, I think. <laughs> Mom's shaking her head yes. She's busy feeding her face, so <laughs> she's not going to go on camera today. Um, but she is over here, and I mean, when she empties her mouth, I'll ask her to say, you know, something so you guys know that I'm not just making this up. But, um, can I have a Kleenex, please? I'm a little emotional today. They're over here, hon. Yep, that's the box. Thanks, sweetheart. It was a little worked up. Um, I felt just a mild attack by one of the comments I got. Um, and it was probably just because I'm attacking myself all the time. And my dad's hospice team knew this. When my dad was on hospice, um, I felt very attacked a few times by a couple of staff that I wasn't doing what I should be doing. And the one day, um, the chaplain in the... Um, caseworker, um, whatever they're called, came out to visit, and they helped me get my dad off the floor that day, and then they were talking about what kind of equipment we could change to help make my life easier, and I ended up stepping into the bedroom to show the chaplain what bed my dad had, and he goes to me, he goes, I hope you don't feel like we're attacking you and saying that you're not doing a good job, because you are, and I says, I, I said, to some degree, I do feel that way, and I says, and mostly from the one person, the other person that was with him. And I says, but I think it's because I am attacking myself all the time. I'm the one that's the hardest on myself about this. And so when anybody else says something pointed at me, you know, that may even, it might not be at all like that they're meaning it harshly. I take it as that because that's how I feel about myself. And so after that, she was totally different for me. She was very careful with her wording and stuff, um, the, the caseworker was. But I, I, they all were constantly building me up and trying to remind me I was doing the right stuff. And there, it's, I didn't articulate very well that I also am a very loud person by nature. Um, it comes from my dad's side of the family. When there's one of ten, you're, you know, my dad was one of ten kids. When you got that many kids, you have to be loud to be heard in the family. <laughs> and then I'm like one of, what, 49 grandkids or something like that. Mm -hmm. And so family reunions, you had to be loud to be heard. But I was actually one of the shyest family members um, until I got older. I was one of the shyest family members. So, I mean, like... For the longest time, I wouldn't speak. If I wanted to talk, I talked through my mom, you know, and stuff. And um, so I can be very vocal. And so sometimes when people think I'm yelling, it's I don't even realize I'm yelling. It's just that's my normal tone. Like right now, mom might say I'm yelling, right? Yeah. And I really don't mean to be yelling. I'm just overly excited. I will talk loud. And I do that when I'm upset too and then of course it has more of an aggressive tone and it comes across as I'm yelling at my mom um but anyway uh I just wanted to clarify a little bit that I don't regret taking care of my parents by no means I appreciate the fact that I was in a place in my life where I could take care of my family you know my mom my dad and I always say it that you know they gave me life. They clothed me. They fed me. They diapered my butt when I was a baby. So it won't hurt me to do that. Those things I don't mind. I mean, granted, when my dad needed to deal with the diapers and stuff, it took me a while to get comfortable doing that. Um, but I think that kind of makes sense. I mean, if it was my mom, I think I would have had an easier time falling into that routine. Although I do have, there are certain things that happen that I have a hard time doing. Um... Because of my gag reflexes, reflexes, I can't talk. Um, but because of those, I can't do certain things very easily without making myself sick. So, um, yeah, that I want to clarify. 
I have no problem taking care of my mother. I have no problem when I took care of my dad. I think you can ask pretty much any of my family or friends that know me real well. And they tell you I did a good job of it too. And that I was, you know, I mean that's all I hear from everybody that knows me real well and was around during that time is that I, I was doing everything I could. I was doing the best I could with what I had to do work with and with what knowledge I had. And more frustrating because it's like I get frustrated with myself because I don't know how to guide her through those moments. I don't know, you know, what I can say to make her calm down and find what she's looking for or to do what she's got to do. Um, and she gets frustrated with herself because she feels like she's a burden. I'm assuming that's what you've told me in the past. Right? Right. And I don't see her as a burden. I do not see her as a burden. I do not see her as a burden. I have said that before, have I not? Mm -hmm. And I have shown you that, have I not? Yeah. And so you have no reason to think that, do you? But you feel that way because as human nature, we feel like burdens on other people when we have to have help. It's just how we are as humans. And um, so it's it's sometimes it's just not being able to communicate our own feelings that make it so hard and make it so frustrating and especially this last year with everything else going on it's just an added bonus point for everything you know and um i honestly can say that i do the best i can and i think if my sister is watching this that she'd agree my brother if he's watching this would agree my br brother loves to tease me that i'm not taking good care of mom and stuff but i honestly think it you know he would say that i am and it sometimes that hits hard you know because not only do i feel sometimes like i'm not doing it a good enough job but sometimes you get it from other people that are just joking with you but they don't realize how hard you're taking this and how hard it is on you. And I don't have that, you know, significant other support line like they do. And it's like, it, it's just kind of adds to that I don't have somebody else I can turn to other than my siblings. And they're not around all the time. They're not here to see the ups and downs. You know, I mean, they do. My sister gets to see more of them than my brother probably does. But... They do see it to some degree, um, but it gets harder every day to cope with some of the things that those outside the home don't have to deal with and stuff, and it's hard to explain, and I'm not attacking my siblings by no means. Um, I don't want that to be, you know, going back, them coming in and going, you're attacking me in your YouTube video. I'm not attacking my siblings by no means. They're doing what they can do to help me out. Um, my brother comes out and helps me with repairs if I need it. He um, guides me over the phone with repairs if I need it. Um, my sister do helps me with laundry when I need help um, or dishes or I need another Kleenex. <laughs> Sorry. Help me out where they can. My siblings do the best I can. And I know that, but in the moments that are stressful... I sometimes think I'm not doing enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not, and and it's a mindset that I'm working to break. Um, as I've said before, I'm working on mindfulness. I'm working on um, my uh, mental well-being, self-care. I'm working on sleeping better, walking away the um, anxiety. I'm working with books like that that are helping me. I'm reading through them. I'm highlighting the things that really jump out at me as things I need to keep in mind or I need to um, focus on. And I just finished one last yesterday, the kindfulness, which was a lot about mindfulness. Um, and like I'm, there's some meditations in there that I want to go back and visit. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's not that I don't want to take care of my parents. It's not that I um complaining about taking my care of my parent. I am not complaining. I know it may seem that way, but I'm wanting it out there what I'm dealing with because there's somebody out there that's struggling too. 
And if they see this video and they see that they're not alone in that struggle and that sometimes it's going to be hard and then there's days when it's the greatest day in the world and you get to go do something and you, you, they remembered everything that day and those days are great. It makes those days even better when you deal with the hard days. And it's just like, I'm not complaining. I just want others to know that it's okay. How you feel is okay. It may not be okay how you're handling the situation, but it's okay to feel those feelings. Now you need to find a way to check them, and that's what I need to do too. And, you know, check it at the door when I deal with her, and then pick them up and find a way to cope with them. You know, it's just, it's a lot, and we're all going through it, and we're all going through something. We Nobody's without something that they're going through. And I don't, I'm not complaining. I am truly blessed. I am very blessed. I was lucky to have great parents. My dad wasn't always the easiest person to deal with, and I know that. But I will tell you this, I loved him dearly, and I still do. And I miss him, but I am grateful that he's where he's at because that's better for him. He was in so much pain, so much pain. And to watch that was, it was just heart-wrenching, you know. It's like this strong man goes from being so strong and active to being so weak and depending on you. It's not that he depended on me that made me pray for his dying. It was that I seen how it hurt him. And I couldn't, I couldn't be selfish and keep him here because I wanted him here. You know, I needed to let him go. And so, you know, that for me was an easy let go because of how hard he struggled. And this one's going to be a harder let go for me when it comes time for my mom. And I don't regret taking care of her. Have I ever made you feel like I do? No. Do I ever make you feel like you're a burden? Mm -hmm. It's just human nature that makes you feel that way. And so, unfortunately, that's how it goes. And so I don't know if maybe that, hopefully that helps you understand where that video was coming from. I just, I was just struggling to, I make my videos and a lot of times they end up being an hour video. When I, especially if I'm doing like cooking or I'm doing a craft, and I have to condense that into a small version, because certain steps take longer than other steps, and you have to just you know, and you don't need to watch that whole step. Just wanted to clear that up. That wasn't me complaining about taking care of my mom, and I don't think mom took it that way. No. Um, she's heading off to the other room for a moment, but um, I just wanted to explain what's been going on uh, and so that is also another reason that some of the videos don't go up when they should um because of the fact that i you know i have t priorities that have to take place take higher priority and so i have things that i need to edit and there are videos that i uh, may maybe last fall that i still want to post but i need to edit them so like, I have a lot of ideas. I just need to sit down and write them down in a book so that I don't lose the ideas I have. Um, and I need to try to find a, a quiet moment when I'm not feeling so stressed out to video. And I just ask you to bear with me and to understand that it's okay for me to feel this way. It's okay for you to feel how you're feeling. We all have something that we're feeling and we all have something that... And, you know, I think we also all have things that we're ashamed of in our past and we just need to lovingly embrace that past and say, it's because of this that you are who you are. And while it wasn't a great situation, it's okay to forgive yourself for it or it's okay to let go of it and say that I'm going to be better now because I learned from that. And that's what I'm working on trying to do with myself. And, um, and that's where the mindfulness journey this year has come in. And I really am getting a lot out of it. I really do feel like I am. And that's where I'm calling myself out on videos. So I can release it. I can say, okay, so this is what I've done. It's okay. Now I need to move forward. Sure, it wasn't the best action, but I'm okay. I'm going to be okay. And mom's okay. And she's going to be okay. And we're going to be fine. We talk. I don't 
I have two rules that my mom taught me when I was younger that my grandma had always said. And uh, for the most part, I try to live by those rules. Now, um, it's hard sometimes with certain people in my life to live by a couple of them, by the, by the one rule. Um, but I try never to let anybody leave my house angry. I've had it happen, and I have, I've watched it happen where then you don't get to make peace with the person and stuff. Um, and never let somebody go to bed mad. And that one I absolutely live with when it comes to my mom. I don't let her go to bed mad, and I don't let myself go to bed mad when I'm mad at her. So we work it out. We will stay up until 2 in the morning if we have to. And I don't do that too often. We, we try not to have to be up till 2. But my mom and I are very good at knowing, you know, what at what point we've both gotten over it. And we're able to talk it out. And so I just, you know, I am grateful that... She is so understanding and loving, and I am grateful that I can be here for her. And that, you know, and God put me in this place where I'm at in my life to, you know, make me a stronger person in some way. And I just am impatient, and I want the, to know why I need to be this, you know. Um, but no, I. it's just, I don't have a regret about taking care of my mom or my dad and I would turn around and take care of any family member I could and I don't mind it it's not that and I know that it's going to get worse before it gets better you know and I know there's going to be good days there's going to be bad days I know all this stuff I just I made a promise to myself with this channel that I was not going to ever be false I'm going to be truly who I am and if that bothers you, you don't have to watch my videos. I'm sorry, you know. I'm not going to apologize for who I am. I will apologize for making you uncomfortable. But I'm not going to apologize for how I feel or who I am. I am who I am and I am good with me. I didn't used to be, but I'm getting better at being okay with who I am. Um, every day I work to forgive myself again for different things in my past. Um... You know, and it's just a constant move forward a few steps. Feel like you fall back a few steps. Try again. And and that's where I'm at. And I think I'm going to close this video here. If you have questions about this or you want me to just address it in, a, in more detail or anything. If there's anything that I'm unclear on or you feel like between the two videos you'd like to know a little bit more on that. Um, let me know. And I will... Try to be more, um, under, you know, like, open, like, I will try to find a better way to articulate myself. If I could even articulate to start with, I have no clue. Um, but yeah, and one of the things I'm having struggles with right now is my writing. I want to be writing, but nothing is, I feel like a lot of it's been put on hold. I just don't have ambition right now to do any writing. And that is another reason I'm struggling with my, um, my Lenten journey is because that was helping me write even just a fanfic right now. And writing is one of my um, self-care tools that I use a lot. And I just can't sit down and actually get a whole thought out of my head. I'll have like a bunch of things going on. And I'm going to share something with you guys just a second here. I have a journal book, and you guys have seen these journal books about a hundred times, I know. But I have a journal book started with all these ideas I have for stories. Like, every prompt I can think of. Anytime I get an idea for a story, whether it be an original story or a fanfic, I write it down in here. So that when I'm needing a little inspiration, I can go and read that. And then sometimes I'll write off of one of them, and sometimes I just go completely off a different idea. Um, but that's just how I... That's where I've been at with that because a lot of things I don't feel like doing right now. And just being even as productive as I was the last three days has really helped me feel better in some respect. And I um, am going to try this week to work on catching up on all my video stuff that I wanted to get done. I have goals that I set for myself in what I call my homework. Um, and media class is one of them, which is taking care of my social media 
and it's videoing, uh, editing, uploading, and my blog. Um, and I have, I'm behind by about five videos making them and editing like five videos and posting like three of them. So I have goals for every week and I like don't get them all done. So I'm trying to get work ahead so that I can start doing Christmas ed videos so that this year I'm not struggling at the last minute to put them all together. Now, I know me. Guess what? That ain't gonna happen. So, we'll see. Life has a funny way of coming at you sometimes. And I'm um, coping the best I can. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. And I hope it's as beautiful and wonderful as you guys are. We'll catch you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>